The day has finally come. Figma has now launched variables to help us manage our topography styles and as a bonus, stops in our gradients. With that said, let's dive in and see what it's all about. All right, so before we dive into this, I just wanna let you know, in this breakdown, I am not going to be teaching you how to build a design system with variables from scratch. If you do wanna learn that, I am working on two new modules for my highly acclaimed Figma course. You can see over here, I'm actually currently already in the works. I'm about to film this and I'm about to actually launch these two new modules over the next couple of weeks. Don't, me, don't hold me to it. I'm trying to get this done as quick as possible. But as you can see, we're, you're going to be learning how to utilize variables to build a design system from scratch. You're also going to learn how to utilize that skill set to then do cool things like this within a couple of clicks. You'll also learn how to utilize conditional statements to build some really cool and advanced prototypes all with variables and conditional statements, which are Figma's latest features. So if you do want to get access to these two new modules for free, make sure to check out my Figma Masterclass course. I've attached a 10% coupon code so you can get access to it and you'll also get all the updates for free once they launch. But if you're not interested, let's dive into the breakdown. Now, as you can see, we have two models over here. The first one on the left, if I select any of the text, we're just using standard type styles that everyone probably already knows how to use for styling this text. Now, that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that if you are working on a project that's small scale, doesn't really need a robust design system. But if your goal is to actually go ahead and start building out a design system for internal use for a large organization across multiple teams, you probably realize type styles are a little bit limited and you probably want to start utilizing variables in this use case. So on the right hand side, we have the exact same modal and these uh, type styles have not been styled at all just yet. No type styles, as you can see. So I'm going to go and open up my local variables and let me just collapse this and explain to you how this is set up. Once again, I'm not going to go through how to build this from scratch. If you do want to learn this, I will be launching the two new uh, modules to my Figma course. So as you can see, under the primitives collection, I have a group for units, which really define the units of measurement. I generally like to keep it all to mul multiples of four. So you can see the four all the way to 40 for this demo uh, example. Then we have a collection for topography styles and under topography, I've got a, a group for font family, weight, line height, and font sizes. And then I've also got some colors just for an example, because Figma did launch variables for the stops in your gradients. And I want to show you how that's all done as well. So as you can see, everything has been created under these collections. Now in the font family, I've actually gone ahead and created a font family with a string for inter. I've gone ahead and created the font weights of regular, medium, and bold. And I've assigned a string value for regular, medium, and bold, which we can then pull through as variables into a topo topography. Line height, you can see that in this demo example, you can see if I select the paragraph, the line height is at 24 pixels. And if I select the title, it's at 28 pixels. So. For this demo, you can see that I've got extra small line height, which is associated to 16, 20, 24, and 28. And then font sizes, you can see that the paragraph text is 16 and the title is 20. So in this demo, I've got extra, extra small assigned to 20, uh, 12, extra small is 16, medium is 20, large is 28. So with this example over here, I'm going to show you how we can start setting this up for the new uh, launch of variables for our topography. Now, as you can see, units are already created. So these values can be pulled through and be called into other variables as well. That's the benefit of using variables. So font sizes, since this is actually 12, we can go ahead and instead of using a static number, we can actually use variables. We can go down to our units of measurement. We can go 12, then we can go 16, and then we can change 20 to 20 and 28 to 28 as well. As you can see, these values, these extra, extra small font sizes is now associated to units slash 12, which is controlled over here. As you can see, because we are creating these relationships, it allows us to manage all these numbers, all these styles, 
all in one place. Without having to flick through different textiles and do it manually, everything is very systematic and it's all constructed in this panel. So our font sizes are actually created. Let's go ahead and set up our line height. I'm going to set 16 as a static number and select 16. Go 20, 20, 24, 24, 28 and 28. Now obviously remember every design system will be different. There's no point designing a massive design system if the styles are not required. So generally you want to really think about what are the key components in your design system and you want to create a design system that is perfect for your setup. So everyone is going to have a different setup um, in terms of what values are available. So font weight, we're going to keep this as a string um, because this can be pulled through dynamically into the uh, text styles over here, as you will see shortly. And then also the font family can stay as a string as well because we can pull through that dynamically um, right after. So as you can see, quick recap, we've got our units that defines our four point grid system, which also defines all the different line heights, uh, font sizes, uh, spacing, padding, because everything is generally divisible by four. Then our topography, you can see that anything that is numerically uh, related, such as font sizes, we've pulled through that dynamically through our units uh, collection, our line height as well, and the font weight and font family are not because they are generally a string. So once that has been set up, I'm going to go ahead and directly select uh, my title. I'm gonna head over to my text panel. Whoops, let me just move it to the side. And I'm gonna select this variable icon at the top and I can actually set the font family to be inter as defined in my primitives collection over here. So let me click that, select that, and you'll see that that is now linked up. For the font weight, I can say that because this is the title, we want to make sure it's a medium. I can select drop down, apply variable, and we can actually change that to medium. That's been selected. Now for the font size, selecting the drop down and selecting the variable, I can actually go ahead and select 20. So that might actually might be, let me just quickly go and find it. 20 would be uh, font size, topography font sizes, and it could be medium. And for 28, you can see that we can go line height, topography, line height, large, 28. So that's looking pretty good. Now, if I go ahead and select my paragraph, I can go and do the same thing. Since this is going to be a regular, I can go down, apply variable and select regular. Whoops, your font weight. Then we're gonna change the font size from 16 to, we're gonna go ahead and make sure it's font sizes, it's small, or extra small, sorry. And then 24 line height is going to become line height, medium. As you can see, now this is, has been all linked up with our variables for type styles. If I go ahead and change anything, let's just say, for example, the font family, we're going to go and pick my favorite font family, Comic Sans MS. You can see immediately this will automatically update all the type, type styles because they are already linked to the font family, which we have defined in our collections over here. So if I change that back to inter, that's looking pretty good. Now let's say we want to change the weight. Let's say we decided to go Anything that was medium, we actually want to go and redefine that as bold for whatever reason. I can go ahead and change this to the value of medium to back to bold. And you can see that that would dynamically change it. I can go ahead, hit command Z, just undo that. And if I decide to ever change the units of measurement, let's say we anything that was actually going to be 12 pixels or sorry, 16 pixels, we actually want it to be 20 pixels you can see that that will also update your paragraph text. Now, obviously there are lots of different ways in managing this, but this is just one way of how you can implement variables for your type styles. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the gradients. So another update that Figma has made in terms of variables is allowing you to, now I'm gonna select my button, over on the fill, you see I've got a actual gradient over here. Previously, we can always turn a gradient into a global style, which we can reuse everywhere. But once again, we want to make sure that it's systematic and it's implemented into our design system. So with that in mind, under my primitives, under col colors, 
I've got two examples over here, primary 500, which is the lighter shade of blue, primary 600, which is just the darker shade of blue over here. These have been defined as the value. So I've gone ahead and selected um, a new variable under color, and I've selected these two colors. Now, because these are, are defined in my collection, I can head over to my button, into my gradient, into the first stop, which is the top. I can go ahead and select this color. Under libraries, I can hit primary 500, select the end of the gradient, select the color, libraries, primary 600. You'll see that these are now connected. And if I ever decide to change primary 500, because we, let's say we want to go and become a uh, pink brand, I can go ahead and adjust the pink of the blue to a pink, and that will automatically adjust everything that's utilizing pri uh, primary 500 and 600. So that's pretty much the major update that Figma has launched to variables. This can be extremely powerful because if you are building out a comprehensive design system, it's going to save you a lot of time. So hopefully that gives you a better understanding of how to utilize variables for topography styles and also your gradients. With that said, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to gently smash that like button, subscribe for the diehard fans. If you want to keep learning, you should definitely check out this video.